In the outskirts of Pelican Town lives Marnie, Shane, and Jess. The three all live on Marnie's ranch, a place where the player goes to buy all of their animal goods. However, what seems like a simple ranch secretly has a dark past. I believe that when Jess's parents died, Shane gained custody of her and fell into a depressive state before the two moved to Marnie's ranch in Stardew Valley. First of all, we need to clarify the trio's relationship to each other. Many people, as well as the wiki page, believe that Marnie is Jess and Shane's aunt. However, I believe that Marnie is only Shane's aunt. In Marnie's Tuesday dialogue, she tells the player, quote, My nephew Shane has been staying at my place the last few months, unquote. This line of dialogue directly shows how the two are related, but what about Jess? After doing some digging, I couldn't find any dialogue from Marnie about Jess. She never calls Jess her niece, nor does Shane ever refer to her as a sibling or cousin. However, when going through the game files under the file NPC Dispositions, Shane is referred to as Marnie's nephew and Jess as her niece. However, Jess's line doesn't refer to Marnie as her aunt like Shane's does, but Jess calls Marnie her aunt in several lines of dialogue. For example, on her Wednesday Four Heart dialogue, she says, quote, Aunt Marnie won't let me go out after 6 o'clock, unquote. So, what gives? Is Jess Marnie's niece? Well, not exactly. If you get enough hearts with Vincent, and if you are a female player, he starts referring to you as his auntie. You aren't his aunt though, just a close friend. The same could be applied to Marnie and Jess's relationship. After all, Jess also calls Shane her uncle in his Ada Heart event. When you enter the ranch during the Heart event, she tells you, Uncle Shane's in the barn. However, Jess explicitly tells you in her Ten Heart dialogue that Shane is her godfather. He was a friend of her family before they died. Now, some may argue that Shane could still be her uncle. Uncles can still be godfathers, after all. If that's the case, why wouldn't Jess call Shane her uncle in the Ten Heart dialogue? She could just as easily have said, Did you know Shane's my uncle? However, she tells the player that Shane is her godfather, as well as saying that he was a friend of her parents, not related to them. So, it can be safe to assume that Shane is her godfather, just a friend of the family. Now, this sets the stage for what led up to what you see in Stardew Valley. If you reach two hearts with Jess in the game, you can enter her bedroom. Now, her room seems like any normal room a kid her age would have. There's paints, coloring books, plushies, etc. However, one detail stood out to me the most, the jack-in-the-box. If you inspect the jack-in-the-box, it says, quote, The jack-in-the-box is sprawled out, his arms bent at grotesque angles, his hollow eyes peer coldly into the distance. Already, this sounds like a disturbing picture, something a normal kid with a normal childhood wouldn't have in their bedroom. However, Jess does not have a normal childhood. Her parents died when she was younger, in fact, probably not too long before the player moves into Pelican Town. After all, Marnie tells the player that Shane has been staying at her place for a few months before the player moved in. Now, what if the Jack in the Box represents Jess's dead parents? The description given to it sounds like something out of a horror movie. His arms bent at grotesque angles could represent her parents having broken bones, so broken that they look unnatural. His hollow eyes peer coldly into the distance. Typically, when someone describes a dead person's eyes, they are often described as cold and hollow, like the jack-in-the-box. But why would Jazz have her jack-in-the-box in such a horrible position? Why would she imagine her parents looking like that? Probably because she didn't imagine it. She saw it. No, this, this part is just speculation, but I think that Jazz was traumatized by witnessing her parents' death, perhaps in a car accident. That would explain why she would know what her parents looked like at their death, and it could explain why she has the jack-in-the-box in such an unusual position. Of course, the, j the death of Jazz's parents affects everyone around her, especially the friend of the family, Shane. Now, since Marnie isn't Jazz's real aunt, I don't think Jazz had any other relatives she could have lived with. After all, if she did, she most likely wouldn't be living with Shane and Marnie. So, I believe that Shane was given custody of Jess, since he was her godfather. While godparents typically doesn't mean that they get custody of the child, according to Leanna Hamill, an attorney at law, quote, 
If your child has a godparent but no guardian named, and something happens to both parents, the selection of a godparent may be used by the court to help determine the parent's wishes. Unquote. I believe that Jas's parents knew this and trusted Shane enough to take care of Jas if they died. Because of this, it's safe to assume that Shane and his parent, her parents were extremely close. So, their death would have shaken him up a lot. After all, now he has to deal with the loss of his two good friends while also being given the responsibility of taking care of Jess. This is where Shane started to become the depressed chicken man we all know and love today. After all, according to government.nl, you cannot be suffering from a mental disorder in order to even have guardianship for a minor. So, if Shane was depressed like he is now before their deaths, there is no way he could even be allowed to take care of Jess. So, with Jazz now under his care and his closest friends dead, Shane was on a downhill spiral. However, it soon became obvious that he wouldn't be able to take care of Jazz on his own. So, he asked his Aunt Marnie if he could rent out a place in her ranch so she could help take care of Jazz. She, of course, agreed, but only if Shane would pay rent and the two would move to Stardew Valley. Life on the outside seemed to have gotten a little better, but Shane mentally was still out of it. He gets a job at Joja Mart to pay rent, and eventually starts distancing himself from Jess. He even starts going to the saloon every night and turns into an alcoholic. And this is where we see him when we arrive at Pelican Town. Shane, a depressed man who drinks himself to death while working at the depressing Joja Mart. Jess, a shy girl without parents and a distant guardian. Both of their lives changed because of a fatal accident. However, with all that's happened to Jas and Shane, I still believe he cares about Jas. In Shane's Four Heart event, Shane is passed out onto the ground after drinking too much beer and Marnie confronts him about his life choices. She asks him what his plan for the future is. Unknown to Shane, Jas walks into the room to see what's going on. Shane tells Marnie that he hopes he won't be alive long enough to need a plan and this greatly upsets Jas. She runs out of the room crying while Shane breaks down, murmuring an apology to her. In Shane's sixth heart event, Shane is contemplating suicide and asks the player why he shouldn't end his life and just roll off the cliff. The player then has the option to tell him, quote, Jas needs you. You're like a father to her, unquote. When he realizes what he said, he begins to feel horrible because he forgot about Jas. This dialogue from the player also shows how Jazz still loves Shane, despite him always being so distant. As the player's hearts grow with Shane, we start to see hope for Shane and Jazz. In Shane's seven heart event, he stops his habit of drinking beer as much and starts to feel much happier. He even goes over to Jazz and gives her a present, expensive bunny jewel slippers. Jazz is overflowing with joy as she hugs Shane. In Shane's eight heart event, Shane tells the player that he's been teaching Jess how to care for a chicken so he could pass something down to her, like a parent would do with their child. Finally, in Shane's eight heart dialogue, he tells the player, quote, I guess I've grown attached to Marnie and Jess. We're a ragtag bunch, but it feels like a weird family, unquote. Although life was rough in the beginning, in the end, Shane and Jess were able to become their own happy family with Marnie.